Hi, my name is Kyla Rose Leonero from BSECE 3C and this is performance task number 11 of ECE 23 and this presentation is about the GFDM or the general Generalized Frequency Division Multiplexing. Generalized Frequency Division Multiplexing or GFDM is a blocked, filtered, multi-carrier modulation scheme recently proposed for a future wireless communication system. It generalizes the concept of the ortho orthogonal frequency division multiplexing or the OFDM. GFDM is a flexible solution to address the requirements imposed by the new scenarios foreseen for the 5G networks. So in this scheme, a symbol composed of several subcarriers and multiple subsymbols is used to transmit a data block where each subcarrier is a pulse shape with a transmission filter. So in this illustration, this is the GFDM transceiver where it is a block-based multi-carrier communication scheme and each F GFDM block employs K subcarriers with each transmitting M complex valued subsymbols and therefore a total of D is equal to KM symbols that are transmitted within one block. Okay, for the introduction, different pull shape can be used as a prototype filters which introduce a new degree of freedom to the system. The subcarrier um, filtering is not only reduces OOB emissions but also might introduce intercarrier interference or ICI and the intersymbol interference or ISI. Implementation approach based on fa fast Fourier transform or FFT algorithm shows that it is possible to efficiently construct GFDM transceivers with the technology available today. So among the synchronization approaches available for OFDM, the data methods allow the use of the both autocorrelation and cross-correlation properties and one-shot synchronization can be achieved in bit pipe and burst communication. So now this is the block diagram of the GFDM transmitter. So in the first step, data from a binary source is arranged in the K subcarriers carrying M subsymbols each, which result in a total of MK parallel substreams. The binary is mapped into a complex valued quadrature amplitude modulation or the QAM symbols. Each stream is critically unsampled by the factor n is equal to mk. Um, is example is wherein the zeros is appended. So this tough sequence are filtered with the corresponding transmit filter, the GKM matrix at the, the formula at the right side, where the G of N denotes the impulse response of the prototype filter with N samples, while the K, M, and N are the subcarrier subsymbol and the time sample indices, respectively. This sequence can also be represented as a column vector G, K, M. Next is the exemplary illustration of different time shift of a prototype filter with a GFDM block with M is equal to 8 sub-symbols. So notice that the modulo operation in the combination of the prototype filter effectively produces a circular convolution of the unsampled data symbols with a filter tail or tail biting filtering as depicted in the illustration. So therefore, the sequence after the filtering process remains of the length and samples. So finally, the baseband transmit the signal in the digital domain is obtained through the summation of all subcarrier and subsymbol signal according to the operation below. So in the matrix notation, the generation of the transmit samples x is equal to xn raised to t and where it can also be expressed as x is equal to ad, with the data vector being arranged as d is equal to d0, etc. And the transmit, tra transmit matrix as a is equal to g0 up to gk-1 and minus 1. The insertion of the cp and cs can be obtained with the use 
of the extended transmission matrix, or the X is equal to A E D, where the A is equal to W E A, and this is its notation. Now, let's move to the basic block diagram of the GFDM receiver. So, where it where the bits passes the AWGN. So now, so now the received baseband samples are obtained according to the Y is equal to H asterisk X plus V, where the H is a re realization of a multipath channel, and the V is an AWGN vector, and the asterisk denotes convolution. Assuming the perfect knowledge of the channel impulse response and the perfect time and frequency synchronization of, at the receiver, the cyclic extension can be disregarded and as it makes the convolution with the channel circular, the signal can be equalized in the frequency domain, domain yielding Z is equal to IFFT multiplied to FFTY over FFTH. So the vector of the estimated data symbols D is obtained by D by the factor of BC and where the B is a receiver matrix B sub MF is equal to A raised to B so alternatively the zero forcing or the ZF receiver matrix which is based in the inverse of the transmitter matrix is given by B sub ZF is equal to A raised to negative 1 and is able to remove the self-generated interference once B sub ZF A is equal to I sub N. Next is, as, is the synchronization approach for the GFDM. So consider a GFDM preamble block that consists of MP is equal to two sim sub symbols and the KP subcarriers. In this block, a PN sequence C is equal to C of 0 up to Z of KP minus 1 times T of length KP is transmitted twice. So for the example, the preamble carries the data vector dp is equal to c of 0 up to the c of kp minus 1 raised to t. So the two repeated parts are extended by introducing the smooth block boundaries in the preamble in order to control the OOB emissions. So for this purpose, a special window with ramp up trans transition w sub up and the ramp down transition is defined. As an example, the corresponding coefficients can be taken from a variation of the 2K pulse, like this. To the WN matrix with the up, down, uh, ah, with the W up, the W down formula. Where N is equal to 0 and N plus 1 to, to n plus l minus 1 is the time index, w is the length of the ramp up and the ramp down transitions, and the vn is known as the mayor, mayor wavelet auxiliary function. So v, v of n is equal to n raised to 4 and 35 minus 84n plus 70n squared minus 20n cubed. And finally, the windowed preamble can be written as this formula PW is equal to AWDP where the AEW is extended modulation mat matrix. Note that the preamble sequence presented in this in the last illustration which is designed for the 0 FDM can be reproduced using the GFDM matrix notation P1 is equal to A sub 1 dp, where AE is constructed with a rectangular window. Now, this is the proposed preamble for the letter A. It is a preamble in time domain, and the B is the power spectrum density in the windowed and non-windowed preamble. So, this illustration is, is the proposed preamble for the K sub P is equal to 128 and the L is equal to L sub CP and it is equal to W which is it is also equal to 32. 
So in the figure, half of the subcarriers are intentionally disabled to illustrate the difference in OOB emissions between the conventional and extended approach. So now, okay. So while the non-widowed preamble P1 produces non-negligible spectrum side lobe of negative 35 dBc, the proposed smoothing window in PW is able to drastically reduce the OOB several orders of the magnitude below what traditional OFDM can achieve. So on the receiver side, a set of samples R of N is collected. Among those, the transmitted preamble needs to receive at least once in order to be able to estimate time and frequency offsets. An autocorrection of the sequence R of N is performed according to this operation. From this normalized autocorrection, it can be derived. So the presence of the CP and CS creates a plateau effect in the metric. But this ambiguity can be resolved by integrating over the length of the CP and CS, which yields to this formula, and with this result, the course of STO estimation is obtained by searching for the peak NM. And the angle of P of NM reveals the effects of phase rotation and is used to estimate the CFO. Hence, this is the formula in order to get the phase rotation. And next, the CFO information can be used to correct the frequency offset in the received signal yielding to R min of N. And this operation allows the usage of sharper metric employing cross-correlation with the known transmitted preamble which is given by the matrix of PC. So where P, X of K contains the two halves of the original preamble obtained from the operation P, X is equal to A, D, P. Now let's move to the metric to evaluate synchronization errors. The synchronization error algorithm. Synchronization algorithms used to estimate the time and frequency offset might result in residual errors which, which are termed here as the theta sub r and this figure below so this figure depicts the residual time offset theta r with the cp and cs interval and the residual frequency offset the phase rotation within the one subcarrier bandwidth so the misalignment in the time and frequency synchronization leads to the performance degradation a metric to evaluate the influence of the residual synchronization errors in necessary, is necessary to analyze the influence of imperfect synchronization, synchronization on the system performance. Next is the configuration of the GFDM data block. The metric is then useful as a synthesis tool allowing for the evaluation of the different GFDM configurations and estimations of its performance under the presence of time and frequency offsets. The, the parameters of the table describes a payload packet that is appended to the windowed preamble. The RC is chosen as a smaller roll-off, and the scheme is now evaluated in a time-invariant channel with a delay profile presented in the last illustration. So the first figure is the channel impulse response used for the SER analysis. So it presents the symbol SER or the symbol error rate performance curve consider considering a perfect synchronization as a reference and also the synchronization obtained with the use of the preamble. And the next graph is the SER analysis over time invariant frequency selective channel for a GFDM data block appended to the preamble. This curve. So the main difference between the SER obtained assuming the synchronization approaches and the curve ass assuming perfect synchronization is the high variance of the CFO in low SNR regime leads to a performance gap which when the synchronization techniques are considered. 
So, however, all curves tend to match each other for high SNR, and since in this case, the CFO variance became neglectable. So, for the conclusion, in this presentation, time windowing has been proposed in combination with a synchronization preamble in order to preserve the advantageous spectral properties in a GFDM transmission. A window has been presented which is also be able to provide a considerable reduction in the spectrum side lobes, several order of the magnitude below that can be achieved with a standard preamble designed for the OFDM. Thank you.